Some of you may know that Queensland no longer has a medical board. It was removed by the health minister, Lawrence Springborg, a few weeks back. Apparently it was failing, apparently it wasn't dealing with complaints well. We're going to speak to Joanna Flynn, she's chair of the Medical Board of Australia, about whether that decision was the right one. I have great confidence in the personal integrity of all of the people who are on the board and uh, knowledge of how hard they were working. But there was a very big volume of complaints in Queensland and very long timelines and there is a question about you know, how effectively you're doing your job if matters wait for a long time. And there was some concern about some matters where perhaps their decision making, at least in the Minister's eyes, wasn't uh, robust enough or sort of hard enough. So at that point I think there's really nowhere to go except um, to do something different. It's unfortunate though because in the 12 months prior, the, the period that was reviewed was up to uh, the end of June 2012. In the last 12 months an enormous amount has happened to deal with the backlog and progress things and have things working better but it was too late. Is it connected with the fact that we've now got a national system to deal with um, with the patient complaints? So there's a whole set of issues around how patient complaints are handled in Australia and what the right model is. So New South Wales, when the national scheme started, kept their model of a different complaints management system and, and they in fact wouldn't have joined the national registration scheme had they not been able to do that. It was clear to people who were involved in medical boards at that time that there were different arrangements around the states and different relationships between the boards and the healthcare complaints entities, commissioners and so on. And Queensland's even more complicated because it's got a group called the Ethical Standards Unit in the Queensland Health Department. So part of the history of those problems is the lack of clarity about relationships and the sense in which one group would do something, another group would do something, another group would do something. So the Queensland Health Ministers decided to deal with that by changing the whole system and establishing a health complaints ombudsman with a set of responsibilities for dealing with things at the front end and then deciding where they go. But I'm afraid that that's reactive decision making and it hasn't actually allowed a full exploration of what is the right model and how do we make it work best all around the country. If we have a different system in every state, it's going to be very confusing for practitioners. I know people are already concerned about the costs, but I fear that the consequences of the Queensland Minister's recent decision is to increase costs in Queensland. We're already seeing that while the fees in New South Wales were originally lower than the national scheme, they're now rising up to meet them, and in some professions, likely to actually be higher. So I think it really does call for a proper examination of how it should run. The national scheme really has started from trying to bring things together and get them on the same basis under the national law, but then the interfaces with the other systems in each state are still different. 